America's great gaping wound, 10 years after September 11th, it's still not fully healed. It's here that my journey begins, a journey to find out what remains of that day in the city and in the minds of people here. It's early afternoon, and I'm at the Freedom Tower construction site to meet some of the workers. I'm keen to know if one of them, Eric Brown, will be doing anything for the anniversary. Do I do anything? Well, I think I'm doing enough being here six days a week, 10 hours a day. <laughs> That's how I can remember, baby. Hey, what up, baby? Hey, hey, here's the, here's the... I ask again, and this time Eric becomes more serious. For us, it's like any other day, because this is what we do. We build America. But we're very proud to work on this, because you know, a lot of us was around, you know, we seen this buildings go down. I've never been there. Is it cool? So, too, did Marcus Ernst, a lawyer from Germany. He's lived for 18 years in New York. I'm visiting him to get his perspective on the events of that day. Marcus saw the cloud of smoke over Ground Zero from the roof of his old apartment block. He tells me he was living on the Upper East Side at the time and felt the impulse to go downtown to look at what was unfolding. Marcus says the image impressed on his mind was that of the clouds of smoke and people streaming towards him. All the women with their high heels in their hands, running, barefoot, away from Ground Zero. At the time, the whole world showed sympathy with America. But I want to know if the subsequent reaction of the U.S. towards the terrorists caused that sympathy to crumble away. I accompany Marcus on the way to his office. He loves America, but hasn't lost his outsider's take on things. I ask him what he feels about people's relationship to 9-11 here. He tells me there's no self-reflection on what the trigger for the attacks could have been. It's more a case of falling into the victim role, the injustice of such an attack. Marcus says that's the main aspect. He continues on to the financial district, but I get out at Union Square. It's a place heavy with symbolism for Kay Turner. If anyone is an expert in 9-11 commemoration, then it has to be Kay. A professor of folklore studies, she organizes memorial events each year. For her, the most important memorials were not the official ones, but the unofficial ones that popped up straight after the attacks. Kay thinks that this is a much better barometer of the American soul than US foreign policy. I do think that the world at large sometimes gets a picture of us as, you know, sort of um, reacting purely by going to war. And I think that many of us reacted by being against those wars and by also trying to find ways to expressively commemorate the dead who we had lost on that day. One place that reminds Kay of the way people banded together in the days after the attacks is just a stone's throw from ground zero. St. Paul's Cathedral. It's her favorite place, actually. I love this sign. That New Yorkers have retained many of the spontaneous memorials created after 9-11. This is a place that um, I like to come to because it's the most reminiscent of the memorials that were all over Ground Zero and the ones at Union Square and on the promenade in Brooklyn and in Washington Square Park. They've had this going for a long time. And the memorials continue to pop up. Here, people write their thoughts and wishes or leave photos and objects that mean something to them. I get the sense that I'm seeing a sign of America that was so often hidden over the past decade, the warm-hearted and sympathetic one. 
And Kay believes that Americans should be showing this side more to other nations. I think that when we go through um, the memorialization process that we're about to go through for the 10th anniversary, I think it really pays for us to remember that we're not just commemorating those who died here, but we're commemorating 10 years worth of um, life that has been spent um, as a result of various reactions to uh, the events of 9-11. Other New Yorkers, though, have a different way of tending to memorials. Look in Lang. Look in Lang. She lost a Harry John Rowland comes here every day to polish the bronze now. memorial wall right alongside Ground Zero. He relates details of the attacks to tourists, and he says he does it for the nephews that he lost on 9-11. This building is only half the size. Gigantic, enormous. My first impression was that this guy is a little bit crazy, but a lot of knowledge is brimming behind the unconventional performance. That was a complex of seven buildings. One of his favorite questions is how many towers fell on 9-11. Most people say two, but it was actually seven. And many people are shocked to find out about the others. Other buildings fell down on 9-11? Yeah. I didn't know that. And they're like shocked even here, 10 years after 9-11, these other buildings were here and people were trapped underground. Why would they be trapped underground? They ran to the subways. The subways are open? Hello, it's New York City, a 24-hour town. how we travel to here. They don't talk about the underground. They, they never mention the underground to me. And that's the ones I want to see. Not far from Harry's Patch is New York Fire Department Station 10. Six firefighters from here died on September 11th. And just as I planned to press on, a group of Germans comes by. They're here for the World Police and Firefighter Games, and they're moved by what they've seen. One of them tells me it's a profound feeling to stand at Ground Zero, beholding the site with the gaping holes left by the attacks. He says it looks different to the way it does on TV. At the southern end of Ground Zero, the financial district. It's here that Marcus Ernst has his office. I've come by as I'm still curious about something. Straight after 9-11, as a lawyer, he must have experienced the suspiciousness and mistrust of Americans for himself. He tells me that some of his clients with technically superior products ended up not getting orders from America. It was a direct consequence of 9-11. Americans were buying American out of patriotism, even if the product wasn't the best. Ten years on, though, many Americans want closure with 9-11. One element in that process is the official memorial here at Ground Zero. It'll be opening for the 10th anniversary. Today, the builders are testing the first of two fountains. I try to imagine what it was like 10 years ago, the smoke, the stench. And I realize that I harbor a hope for Americans, a wish that they can finally heal the wounds and regain what they lost 10 years ago, their optimism.